Hi, I'm Belinda Luscombe. I'm an editor at large at Time magazine. Daniel Kahneman has won the Nobel Prize for Economics, even though he's actually a psychologist. He has a new book called Thinking Fast and Slow, and we're going to talk, probably knowing me reasonably slowly today, about that for 10 questions. Welcome, Professor Kahneman. I'm glad to be here. Now, in the book, you frame the way we think um, into two different systems. There's the fast system, um, system one, and system two, the, uh, the slow thinking. Can you explain the difference? Yes, I mean, you know, everybody is aware of that. There are things that just come to your mind. You know, if I say two plus two, the answer comes to your mind. You don't have to decide to do it, it just happens. But if I say, you know, it's a product of 17 times 24, probably nothing comes to your mind. You've got to generate. But I read your book. It's actually 408. <laughs> so, uh, but yeah, but that's, uh, you pull that out of memory and even that was an effort. Are there people who best represent like, you know, public figures that you can think of this is this, this is a, this guy is typical of like slow thinking and this is typical of, of fast or is it within all of us? Well, you know, I mean, you know, you can compare the current president and and his predecessor, predecessor right. and the one of them... The president being much more judicious. Much, well, you know, I mean, certainly much more reflective and much more deliberate. And, and the f previous one quite explicitly uh, trusting his intuition, trusting his gut, and uh, very much following uh, what System 1 was telling him to do. What then are the most common decision-making mistakes? involving these these systems? We are biased to like some people and to dislike other people. We are biased by by words so that, uh, you know, you are not going to have the same attitude to a cold cut of meat if it's described as 10% fat or as 90% fat free. People actually are willing to pay more for the latter. You don't seem in the book, just from a surface reading, to be a, like a huge fan of, of intuition. Um, is it idiotic to go with your gut? No, it depends. It really depends on, on, on the situation. I mean, there are conditions where you know that you are very likely to make a mistake. If somebody has just put a number and you're negotiating and somebody has mentioned a number, you should be very wary because that number looks more reasonable the moment it has come on the table. So there, there are mistakes that people do. Uh, that you can recognize the circumstances under which those mistakes occur. Of all the demonstrations, your, your book lists a lot of really fantastic demonstrations that you did to illustrate this blindness we have to our own biases. Uh, what is your favorite? During a period when there was a fair amount of terrorist activity in Europe, uh, people were asked to consider uh, travel insurance. There were two conditions. And they were asked to, how much would you pay for a policy that pays $100,000 in case of death for any reason? And other people were asked, how much uh, would you pay for a policy that pays $100,000 for death in a s terrorism incident? And people pay more for the second than for the first. Even though it's less likely. Uh, even though it's much less likely. But of course, they're not comparing the two. They're seeing only one of them. And so they're more afraid. People are certainly more afraid, more frightened by the idea of dying in a terrorist accident, then they're frightened by the idea of dying. And the willingness to pay simply reflects fear. What are the biggest ma mistakes that people make in thinking about themselves? Well, in the first place, they think that other people have biases, but that they don't. So they're, we're normally blind about their own blindness. We're generally very overconfident in our opinions and in our, in our impressions and judgments. Uh, Many people, not all, but the people who make the most difference to the lives of other people are very optimistic and they have an illusion of control. And then there is the illusion, which is very important, that the world is more knowable. I mean, we exaggerate how knowable the world is. So, for example, you know, we think that there were people who knew that there was going to be a recession or you know, a very severe event, and I'm skeptical because I think they didn't know it. They thought it, and then it happened, but there were other equally knowledgeable, equally intelligent people who knew the same thing and didn't think there was going to be a recession. So we use the word no in peculiar ways, and that strengthened the illusion that we understand the world when we really don't. 
I'm aware that you have a Nobel Prize for economics, but do you think that the field of economics has been responsive enough to uh, your discoveries and theories? Well, you know, I'm a psychologist and not an economist, and I, I'm actually very surprised uh, that they have been as responsive as they have been. I mean, behavior economics is now definitely part of the establishment. It's a, it's a dominant uh, approach in some of the best departments of economics in the country. So uh, which Nobel are you going for next? <laughs> well, no, I, you know, I mean, what happened to us was an accident, and it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, basically we did psychology and we influenced some people in economics, and I hope that the people that we influence, that they get the Nobel Prize in economics. So I have very strong favorites in that field, but otherwise I don't have any recommendations to the Nobel Committee. Dr. Kahneman, thanks so much for being here. Thank you.